my interest looks at how environments have changed in the past and how that change has affected fossil mammals. I'm also interested in how we can develop models um, and, and methodologies for studying mammals to interpret how the environments have changed. I've had the chance to dig for fossils across the U.S. from Florida to Texas to California, as far north as Idaho, as far south as in New Mexico. Uh, I've had a chance to do field work in Indonesia, but most of my work is actually on fossils that have already been collected, are in museums, and simply haven't been studied. Paleontology is the study of past life, um, and that's very broad. It includes the study of past plants, past animals, um, large animals, as well as microscopic ones. Uh, paleontologists do more than just study skulls and bones. They also study um, indirect evidence of life, such as footprints. They study chemical evidences, such as the, isot the chemical isotopes within individual teeth. They study particular patterns on the teeth, such as the grooves and pits, and that tells us what the animal was eating. They study the relative shape of the bones and of the skulls, because that tells us how the animal was behaving. This is a giant beaver, and the giant beavers did actually live right here in Springfield um, as little as 12,000 years ago. For comparison, this is a modern beaver skull. So this is just one example of how relatively uh, common animals now looked very different in the past. When I was in Indonesia, one of the fossils, or I guess two of the fossils that I found, was a tiger and a hippo. And those are the oldest tiger and hippo fossils known from Southeast Asia. So I, th I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, in some of the museums in Texas, I did work on the chemical signature of teeth from giant ground sloths. Um, these are not the small you know, huggable size sloths that we have today. These are sloths that are 15, 20 feet tall. And by looking at the chemistry of their teeth, I was able to interpret their diets. And that's something that had been debated for the past hundred years. I have a couple dozen publications on fossil mammals. Uh, the most recent of which was reviewing mammals that lived about four to three million years ago uh, within North America. And so that was a exceptionally large paper. It was a combination of field research and museum, re and museum research. Um, I looked at, I was mainly interested in looking at fossils from um, one area in Idaho, but I realized to truly understand what was going on, I needed a bigger picture. And so I wanted to truly evaluate what was happening in North America generally. So that involved going to museums from California to Washington DC, Idaho and Michigan, uh, Texas, and including the museums here, um, here in Springfield. Uh, but in addition, I also did my own field, field work in Idaho. I spent a total of about eight months there living on site and digging fossils. It's incredible how frequently we still find brand new species or we develop new techniques to understand the fossils that we do have. Um, just a couple years ago, I described a new species of fossil mouse from Florida. And, and this year, I described fossils that are new for North America. They had been described in other continents. I mean, I was the first person to identify the fossil as something new, a new species to science. And so I was able to create a brand new scientific name for it. Studying paleontology is important because by understanding how climate and environmental change has affected animals in the past, we can predict how future environmental change can affect organisms, plants, and animals in the future.